Hello everyone from Tony the Scarred Ghost. Today I'm here to review with you the HoloLens 2. So thanks to VR Expert, uh, it is a company that lends AR and VR headsets to people and companies that need them. Uh, I've been able to try this device. They lent me it for some days and I reviewed their service in another video, the unboxing video that I put here in the description of the video together with the link to VR Expert. So thanks to them I have this for some days and before I turn it to Holland I want to tell you what has been my experience with the HoloLens 2. I know it's not the latest device now but it's the first time that I'm able to try it. So let me tell you what have been my impressions with it. Let's evaluate the design of the HoloLens 2. So this is the front. You can see the cameras, the depth camera, other two tracking cameras. This is the display. You can see that there is a protective glass and then the waveguide inside. Here there is the button to regulate the volume. Here there is the button to regulate the uh, lighting of the, the light, brightness of the display. Then the headband, the back with the battery, the closing knob. So you see that I close and open. Um, the headband on the top. And here on the battery there is also the indicator of the status of the battery and the USB-C port and a button to turn it on and turn it off. Uh, you can see also here the, the speakers of the device that are used for the integrated audio. So this is how the lens are made. So you, you can see also the, the headband. This is the part that goes on your forehead so it doesn't weigh too much on your nose or whatever. It doesn't even almost touch your nose, so that's very, very comfortable, as we will see in the comfort section. So there's no controller to show because they work just with hands tracking. And this device is very cool. It's smaller than it seems. It's very elegant. The materials look very solid. This is a very good device for the enterprise. Also, here the materials are easy to be cleaned, so it's not sponge, it's something like leatherette or something like that. So both here and here, this is sponge actually, so this is a bit more difficult to clean. But anyway, the device has a very good and stylish design, they look very, very elegant. Wearing the HoloLens shoe is very easy. Uh, I think Microsoft has done an amazing job about it. So you see, I just put it on my head. Maybe I can open this top strap and make sure that it falls well on my head, close it, and then close this knob behind my head. So, and that's it. I worn it. And it's, it's very easy also to remove. I can maybe open a bit the knob and put it again, close the knob, that's it. It's super easy to be removed and to be put on. And uh, I also found it very, very comfortable. Uh, it's very balanced. Um, it, Microsoft has done an amazing job in making it super balanced. It's also very light and little. If I thought it was heavier and bigger from the videos. Actually, it's quite small and on the head it feels Great. I have not the same sensation with the headset, you know, the VR fatigue. I tried wearing it and playing it also for one hour and such. And I have not the same uh, bad sensations with, with this on. So that's a great news. And also because you feel the weight more here and here and not on the nose or on the parts of that is distributed very well. Also, there is this thing that lets you, in case someone wants to talk with you in the real world, you open it like that, you can work, work on your PC, talk with people, etc. and do this again to put it down. This is very cool. The only problem is that you have to remember to close it well, otherwise, of course, you don't enjoy the full, full field of view of the HoloLens too. But it works incredibly well. So on the comfort side, this headset is okay. Let's talk about the visuals of the HoloLens 2. So you can see that 
I'm looking at some holograms. You can see these colors inside of my eyes. And I can tell you that the experience looking at the display of HoloLens 2 is really underwhelming in my opinion. I expected it to be much better. Uh, everything you've read online about it, especially the deep dive by Carl Gutag, is completely true. So it has lots of issues. First of all, there is the screen door effect. It's like I can see the pixels of the objects that I'm seeing, the holograms. I can see rainbows. So it's hard to explain is that um, it's like if you look at the white surface in the hololens, you see some regions with different colors. Some of them are reddish, other are greenish. And so it's like you see everything dirty, like a rainbow, like a mura. I don't know, even know how to define it. So the visuals are not in uniform color. That's pretty weird. And also there are lots of glare. Sometimes the color separates each other. Um, then the resolution is bigger, sharper in the center of your vision. If you go towards the periphery, it becomes uh, less sharp. So it's like there are some regions with less pixels. Then sometimes you see some weird glitches appearing in front of you. Really, I have to say I didn't like the visuals at all. The only pro of the visuals is that the colors are very bright. There is also a way to modify the brightness of what you're saying, so depending if it is light, day, or artificial light. And also the colors are really bright. So this is something I totally appreciated about the holograms inside the HoloLens. But all the rest is really disappointing. I really can't understand how devices is considered this premium as such bad visuals. So let me show you with this uh, through the lens video. I'm terrible at making through the lens videos. But let me show you how you can see inside this uh, the visual. So of course in the, the video will be a bit worse because it's how to make a through the lens video with a HoloLens and a smartphone. <laughs> Uh, but you get an idea of what I'm saying. So let's see together why I said that it's so, so bad. Okay, let's go through the lenses with the HoloLens too. And even if it is difficult to make videos of this device, in this video you can already see the color inconsistencies I'm talking about. You see some colors changing, a bit green, a bit red. This is a real problem with the device. Uh, also, you can see like the grid of the pixels. These are all problems that you actually have when you wear the HoloLens. But the holograms have bright colors. And regarding the FOV, it is not that bad. It's 52 degrees diagonal. So more or less, you see uh, with the same dimension of the lenses. So it's usable if the objects are quite distant to you. But as soon as you get close, you see them cut by your window. And that's a bit disappointing, of course. But in general, it's usable. So now let's talk about the audio of the HoloLens 2. This is the audio of a game, a Tetris in the game for the HoloLens. And I can say that the audio, as you have heard, is pretty clear on this device. This is thanks to these integrated speakers that you can see, for instance, here and here on the headset that go through my ears, on top of my ears, and communicate the sound pretty well here. So I think the sound integrated is pretty cool, and it's also nice that you can modify the volume very handily with these two keys here. Um, I'm not an audio expert, so I can't tell you the exact characteristics of this audio, but I can tell that for my years, for standard years of a user, or what could be an enterprise user, the audio is clear, works well, is perfect. Of course, if you are an audio engineer, maybe you will need something more. And I have to say that I'm not remain super excited like with the audio of the Valve Index or the Vive Focus 3. So I think the audio is cool, but it's not super great like the one of other devices. 
I also find it interesting that I have not found any slot for uh, external headphones. So no, there is not a classical 3.5 millimeters jack for external headphones. So I guess that you can connect them via Bluetooth or via the USB-C port or whatever. Uh, but I'm pretty surprised that there is not what is present in almost all other headsets. But I guess that since this is a device to be worn very fast in enterprise usage, there is not uh, the real need to have external headset connected with a cable to the device. I don't know. There should be some kind of reasons for that. Anyway, the audio, as I said, is nice and it's good for the purpose the HoloLens 2 has been built for. Let me show you how the tracking of the HoloLens is super stable. So see this window, I can move everywhere and it stays fixed in place. But let me show you better with the 3D model. So now I just uh, took this chameleon and put it on my desk. You can see that I'm moving. I'm also moving pretty fast and it stays fixed. If you look closely, you can see that it slightly moves while I move. So depending on the surface, this desk is not very textured. Sometimes it's super fixed, sometimes it moves slightly. But it's impressive that the tracking makes everything so realistic. So now it's funny that there is this animation and what is impressive is the tracking because with other headsets when you move your head you see the holograms moving a lot with the hololens they're very fixed even if they are distant for you even you know look how impressive it is <laughs> even if you are moving even if you're away if you're close everything looks so realistic so you can really put a picture in your house or in your office and it looks like it is really there. So look, I'm moving away and the tracking is slightly lost just because this is a only white monotone surface. Maybe I have better luck with the window and just some problem with the depth. So I see now that it is slightly inside the window. But apart from that, the tracking is super stable. With other headsets, when I moved away, moving my head, it would have moved a lot. So really, I love the tracking of the HoloLens 2. This is what, probably is the superpower of this headset, is what makes it so cool and makes it mixed reality so believable. Because you see, whatever I left in my space is still there, it's fixed in position, and what, really gives you the impression of a true mixed reality, something that a lot of other headsets are missing. Hand striking is the way to which you interact with this device. There are no controllers, so everything relies on voice, hand striking, and eye striking, but most of the interactions are through your hands. So see how I can move objects just by pinching and moving. What's impressive is the performances of the hand striker. So now you see my hands, that of course are the pink ones, and you also see the counterpart, the digital counterpart that are black. And they're the ones that are playing the piano. So what you notice is, first of all, there is a slight lag be between my real hands and the virtual hands. And also the position is not always the same, exactly the same, it's similar, you can see, for instance, that my middle finger, the real middle finger, is maybe one centimeter behind the virtual one. So actually, I'm not touching the key, but I see stand the text that I'm touching it. What is impressive is the responsiveness of this tracking. Look what I can do. I can mix my hands one on the other. And for my tests, mm -hmm. I've noticed that there are some slight little glitches in doing that but the tracking never fails, never stop working. And I can also do this kind of poses and more or less the tracking keeps working. This is impressive because it is much better than the one on the Oculus Quest 2 and the Vive Focus 3. I can say that it is comparable to the one of the latest Ultraleap hardware and software. So it's really incredible.
I don't know which one is better between this and the Ultra Leap one, but I can assure you that it is very, very stable and effective. So, really, Microsoft has done a great job. That's why you can use this for your interactions because the tracking is so good. So, kudos to Microsoft for these performances, and I can say that I'm really impressed by it and I found interactions usable. The problem is that for this difference in position and latency, sometimes you know you, you are sure that you're touching a button but actually you're not touching it or actually you don't want to touch it and you touch it. So since everything of this is used in your UI, sometimes there are some misdetections or it's a bit weird and frustrating to use the hand striking for the UI when there are these differences between the real and the virtual hand. But most of the time it works pretty well because of the performances that I've shown you now. Talking about eye tracking, I found the demos by MRTK Optimal to show you how this can be used on the HoloLens too. So after I have calibrated the headset for my eyes, look how I can select objects by just looking at them. So now I want to look at the blue objects, now the orange one, the green one. I can say things to make the interaction happen, for instance, explode. Or I can also air tap, so I select with my eyes and then with my hands I just destroy them. So look that I'm going in circle and it's super natural. So I, go, I look at objects and they're selected. So it works incredibly well. I'm surprised on how it works well. Again, I can't compare it with the ones by Toby, etc. I will need the same demo to do that. But I can say that it works very, very well. And it's also great to show you how it works to navigate. So here you are some cool demos. So I look at the planet and you can see that it rotates. It can I can look at the map and look that depending on where I look at the map, the map scrolls to put what I'm looking at more into center. So that's a very nice idea of navigation. I can also zoom in, for instance, say zoom in to zoom into the map and then use my eyes to go directly where I want to go. Notice that I'm scrolling the map just with my eyes. So that's impressive. Uh, depending on what part I'm looking at, it scrolls the map in that direction. Also, there is the automatic scroll of text. So now I'm reading, uh, reaching the bottom, it scrolls automatically. So that's in super power of eye tracking that works, as I said, it's very detailed here. It works very well on HoloLens too. Uh, of course, eye tracking is not perfect here as well. Sometimes there are some misdetections or sees the direction I'm looking at is lighter wrong, but most of the time it works very well. I have to say again in these demos that personally I'm not a huge fan of them. What I've noticed in my experience is that eye tracking should not be used for direct input because it suffers from some problems. For instance, now you're seeing my, the map moving, but actually I don't want to interact with it. So it's the so-called middle touch problem. Whatever I'm doing, I always move my eyes to explore the environment. I'm interacting with objects and that's wrong. And the other problem is this thing that the uh, text auto scrolls, for instance, it's a problem because I'm not used to it. And sometimes it scrolls too fast, sometimes it's a bit slow. And I can't really follow the text while it is scrolling. So it just scrolls a bit and my eyes go up, then go down, then it scrolls again. It's a bit confusing. So I have to say that I'm not super huge fan of these interactions, but they are very interesting experiments. And I have to say also that they prove that eye tracking can help the UI and the UX of various elements and that can be especially important for people with disabilities that can, don't, can't move their hands, for instance. And so being able to read the text or scroll them out just with their eyes it's amazing for them. So really kudos to the accessibility options that um, eye tracking can give on the HoloLens 2. And I have to say, as I said, the precision is super good. 
So I think it's really a superpower that the HoloLens tool can give to the developers and the users. Let's talk about voice interactions. That is the other way to which you can talk with the HoloLens. This one is also great for accessibility. It's also great when you are your hands that you're doing something on the system. For instance, if you're using this in a maintenance scenario, so having voice commands uh, comes handy. I noticed that the engine for voice detection is improved with regards to the HoloLens one when I tried it. It's still not perfect, especially for us non-native English speakers. Sometimes our accent makes Cortana and the voice recognition engine a bit more reluctant to understand what you're saying. So let's try for instance zoom in the map. Zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom in. Okay, it worked. So come to me. Come to me. Come to me. So usually I have to repeat it sometimes before it understands what I'm saying. Sometimes it detects it immediately, especially if there are single words. But if there are multiple words, it's a bit more difficult. Zoom out. Now it works uh, at the first time. Especially if I'm using eye tracking and voice. Sometimes, you know, the eyes are wandering, so the voice commands doesn't detect immediately. And there are these kind of, of issues that may happen. And as I've seen before, with the target selection with single words, especially if I focus more my, my eyes, it works better. So, select. Explode. Select, explode, explode. So it depends. I have to say that most of the time with single words, I had more luck in, in, the, in having the system understanding what I was saying with multiple words or some uh, parts of words that maybe are not easy to pronounce for an Italian or things like that. There are more difficulties. Uh, I had a good experience with it in my usage of the headset. So I especially noticed how it improved with regard to what it was when I tried it some years ago. So I have a good impression about it. It still has to improve, especially for non-native English speakers. This is a game that requires me to scan the room so you can see how the scanning of the HoloLens works well. So notice that the mesh that it creates while examining my surroundings is pretty correct. But it is not exactly correct. So notice that there is the desktop PC, but you can't see like a perfect um, I don't remember the English name of that, but anyway, the shape of a case that is this way, uh, with straight faces, etc. It detects something like a blob there. And also, if I try to move, whenever there is some kind of weird shape, maybe, it detects that there is something, it detects more or less the shape, but it's never perfect. So here, for instance, there are the books and the detector mesh is inside the books. So it is more accurate than the one of the HoloLens one. I noticed that it has usually fewer holes. It has a higher resolution and also is a better quality. It's also much faster. On the HoloLens one, sometimes it was very slow to detect uh, the environment. But even here, there are some issues here and there. So it's very good, especially for planar surfaces. Notice how it detects perfectly the walls. Uh, not so perfect for objects in, the, in your space to detect their exact shape. So I think that to have, you know, the perfect AR cloud or things like that, we are still to wait probably at least one generation of HoloLens. 
But anyway, for most of you, just, just like if I want to put something on my desk, if I want to put an external screen, to understand what is the general shape of the room, it does an amazing job. But let's talk about the UI of the HoloLens. It's interesting that this is Windows 10 holographic and it's like having a special version of Windows where all the space around you is your desktop. So you can put applications all around you. So notice here I have a game and this is uh, like the icon. So it is like your desktop icon. This is something I can zoom in, zoom out, and I can put it everywhere. And when I want to launch it, I can press play to launch the game. Here it is, a 3D application. Here it is, another game. Here you are. You can see all my 3D applications here. Applications on HoloLens can be 3D or 2D. Here we have, for instance, File Explorer. This is a 2D application. You can have multiple 2D applications open at the same time. So I can click on it to activate it. So I can have File Explorer, Windows Explorer, and other windows like this active at the same time. While the 3D one, since they're immersive all around you, only one, of course, can be activated at any time. So for instance, if I want to trigger this game, I press play and you will notice that everything around you disappears to launch the game. So now, when the game we start, I can see there are 3D elements around me about the game and so on. So here you are, the, the game, or in this case. So, uh, what about how to open application? So what is the start menu? The start menu is on your wrist. So if I look at my wrist, I can see the Windows icon. And I can tap on it to open the start menu. It is this one. With all the applications, I can open just by scrolling. So this is the UI. So for instance, if I want to open, I don't know, Microsoft Edge, I click on it and I open it. It's nice that there are multiple ways to open applications or interact with applications with um, HoloLens too. I've already told you about the, um, all the interaction modes. So there are the hands uh, to which I can interact with everything. So I can move this window, etc., etc. There is the voice. So you, I can look at the window and say, close. And if the system detects it, the windows gets closed. Close. Okay, it worked. Also with eye tracking, for instance, I can use only one hand to trigger the star menu. If I look at the star menu and do this gesture, it is triggered. So eyes, hands, voice are all useful for interacting with this device. And it's amazing how really everything you can do is all around you. So everything is holographic. The windows remain fixed in place. And if I close this and tomorrow I come back to this room, the system remembers how this room was made and it show, will show me exactly these icons, this previous so the application is same exact position. So I can have my workspace always with me. I have to say that uh, this is amazing. Of course, there is still a lot of time that is needed to, for this to become really useful uh, and usable by consumers, etc., etc. but it's already an amazing start. I was only also wanted to show you, for instance, the keyboard, so how you can type stuff. So if I click a web address, I'm provided with this, and you notice that I can press these keys like uh, if it was a real keyboard. Of course, you lack all the haptic sensations, and this is a bit of a problem. I also have to say that I expected a bit more from this UX. So for instance, this keyboard, 
isn't very reactive. So there are some light cues. So when I go, go close to finger, to a button with the finger, I see the the but the the writing come close to me, and and then I can press it. I hear a sound. I see the movement. So I, they try to emulate um, to compensate the lack of tracking with some other cues. But I have to say that these cues, in my opinion, are not enough. Uh, I've seen some other applications. I can say, for instance, in VR, there is science physics labs uh, with much better study of uh, UI with uh, just hand tracking. So I'm not saying it is bad. I'm saying that it could have been a bit better, in my opinion. Uh, to make these keyboards and other uh, inputs better, so even without haptics. But anyway, it works. Uh, using the fingers is is good to interact with AR and MR, especially. It's lovely that you don't have to mess with controllers, but sometimes you would have wanted a bit more accuracy. Sometimes the, the input is not as precise as you want, for instance, or. Uh, the tip that you see, so your controller, uh, your, yeah, your, like your mouse pointer is not exactly where is your physical fingertip. So sometimes it's not as precise and um, natural as you want it, but most of the time it's really okay, it works pretty well. Uh, you can interact like this, just touching objects, you can go a bit farther. So I can go a bit farther and then I can interact with the raycast. So for instance, let me try to move the window with the raycast. So this is how the UI and the X of the HoloLens works. I think it's very interesting, not perfect, but very good. So let's see some two or three applications just to show you some uh, fancy that you can do with the HoloLens. I think that there are some that are nice starters. So it's a playground that you can download from the store. It's good for newcomers to the HoloLens to show them, for instance, how to use hand striking, any features, also hammerboard. Everyone loves hammerboard, so it's pretty nice. So I select that I want to interact with the hammerbell. And here you are. So cute. I show him my hand. And he comes towards me because it attacks my hand striking. So this is super cute. And it's very lovely for every new cameras because it makes you understand the power of this device. Uh, but there are other nice things, like for instance, this that makes you understand how to use eye tracking. Select. And here there is a famous demo that while I read, I see everything scrolling. I also showed something like that with eye tracking demo. Select. Select. And here you are, a demo with a piano and some nice effects, for instance. There are the nice apps, I think, for instance, uh, I showed you this before, so there is a 3D viewer where you can put 3D elements in your environment. Um, I noticed also Figmin XR is pretty nice. I also always follow the developer on LinkedIn. It makes you create uh, like interactive, like little experiences and easy way in your environment. One that I particularly love is whole anatomy. I think it's very good to show the power of this device. Okay, what I love of uh, whole anatomy is that it really shows the power of the HoloLens, both the tracking and its possible educational value. 
So notice that I see a skeleton in front of me and it's super stable and I can use this menu in my hand to change how I see this skeleton. Shows how education can become more immersive, better, because really every student can have this kind of educational elements at home or wherever they want and learn from it in a very massive way and all schools don't have to pay for this kind of real objects that maybe are expensive and let the students explore the human body in all its possibilities. So that's why I personally love this application and I think it's a great demo used for everyone. Everyone also understands it because of course it's not too technical, everyone knows uh, how it's important to study anatomy. So this demo is, is really amazing. So uh, it really shows the power of the HoloLens. So let me just show you something else that there is. Of course, there are the system maps, etc., etc. I have downloaded a lot of stuff. Another one that I like talking about games is Keep It Escape because it's, it's cute. It's a game that is very easy to explain to people. Okay, here you are the environment of the game. And I can press play. And I see this cute figure it turns it on with the window sound hey hello so cute it's like more a technical demo it's very simple games not even a game so notice you can take the objects have simple interactions and people can learn how to do stuff and everyone enjoys Kippy, it's really so cute. And that guy is from here to, to there, to his spaceship, so that's amazing. Now, as you can see, very simple tasks and can show you how to use and tracking. So, it's a nice tech demo, I, I love it a lot. And now, let me return to the menu. And another thing that I suggest you to do, especially if you are a developer, is to try to use the MRTK examples. So, because it shows you how, what, it, how, what you can do with the MRTK, the, the toolkit, especially for Unity, to which you can develop applications, and especially it's also a showcase for hand tracking, eye tracking, voice recognition, uh, shaders, etc. Et so it's a nice showcase of what is possible with the HoloLens. And let me try, for instance, with the hand interactions. I showed you before something with the eye tracking. So you can play, you can touch objects, you can take stuff, make it bigger, smaller. So it shows you really everything you can do as a developer with this device. So notice also the slider. So if you're a dev or a tech guy, I think you will love it. Because there are so many demos in this application. Um, let's see, so it's magic when something falls down and stays on the floor. So really MRTK example is another cool app. Um, let me see if there is something else that I'm forgetting. There are many actually. Uh, there are the standard one, photos, blah, blah, blah. I think it's fine. Tips is nice if you are just started and you want to see uh, something, um, some suggestions how to use the device, etc. etc. So now open just a setting to showcase you that there is like the standard window settings. Uh, just modified a bit for this holographic viewer. So there are very nice applications. If you want to download more, there is the store. So here you have the settings for calibration. Here I can calibrate eye tracking. That is very important to use it for new users because every user must be its own eye tracking. 
So to download your application, you have to use the Windows Store, the Microsoft Store that is specialized for the, the HoloLens. And you can download, for instance, Microsoft Mesh that also tried it, but I tried it alone, so it's not so valuable. So notice here the store that I can use Mesh for review. Notice that this store is very business oriented. It has not different kind of games, but manufacturing, architecture, engineering, and construction. Some of these applications you can't even play it. You require a login that you do in the related enterprise services. There are also some games, but just 12. And then, you know, government, retail, productivity. So it's very, very focused on the enterprise sector. So you see there are some games, because this is for developers, but if I pick another category like architect, like architecture, of course, it wouldn't be this way. Just let me show you, as promised, Microsoft Mesh. Do remember if I left it open? So in any case, all apps, Microsoft Mesh app. So I'm alone. Uh, Microsoft Mesh is something more for multiplayer, but it's nice anyway to show you what's the idea of Microsoft with Mesh on the HoloLens. So Mesh creates a table that is like my table in the virtual environment where I can interact with other people in this table. I can get spaces with meeting with other people. And it's cool that yesterday I was here showcasing the HoloLens to a friend of mine and he put these elements inside my space and they're still here. So that's the power really of Mesh that it works to special anchors and this kind of stuff. So it remembers exactly how this environment was made and put these objects in exact same position of yesterday. So this is cool. And then I can draw stuff in there. For instance, I can pick a color. I pick the bubbles, orange bubbles. So let me draw a heart for you. And it's a bit like, you know, <laughs> teeth brush with your hands. So it's pretty cool, I can also put some icons, let's put a, a, xing xing, a star, so look how cute, here I can put another one, here, and I can remove stuff, and I can add also 3D elements, so there are some sample ones, so let's put this one for instance. And you can say you can see that it is taking it here, and of course I can resize them. So it's a collaborative environment. If it was someone else with me and I invite him to this space, we can interact with all these objects together and create together. This is the idea of Microsoft Mesh. And as you can see, as I said, for the stable tracking, it's amazing. It's like these elements are really here in my space and collaborating all together in an environment, defining all of this together can be really the future of collaboration, I think. So I will be very curious to see how Mesh evolves also because of its, you know, uh, framework, its SDK, APIs that pro will provide also to developers. I think the potentialities are really great. So let's see how it will be. And with this, I just close my little tour with the demos of the HoloLens. I invite you, if you get all of of course, to experiment with all that you can download. There are not many applications at the moment, but anyway, in one or two days, you can try some demos, understand the potentiality of the headset so that you can create something yourself or your company. Something that I always loved about the HoloLens, even the one is the device portal. Basically, your HoloLens acts as a server. If you connect to it on a, with a, from a PC on the same Wi-Fi, you can analyze something of the device. So you can see, for instance, what's the 3D view of the device. Uh, 
you can also notice that you see some debug info and that's it you can see what are the running apps at the moment what are the installed ones deploy some applications that you created um, the one thing that I personally love is the mixed reality capture so um, here you can take photos record and also have a live preview so this is how I recorded all the videos that you've seen before so with this, live this is how preview, I recorded all the videos that you've seen before and with this live preview and with this live preview, sorry for the echo, you can see what they are using in you. Is preview, so that you can use it for demos, for instance, because it's what um, you see what other people are seeing, you can guide them. Uh, you can track the performance, you can kill processes, uh, then you can get uh, access to the log, you can explore the files, activate kiosk mode, check with other performances of the network blah 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 so it's a very powerful tool and it's all via web so you just connect on whatever pc or smartphone whatever on the same network and you can really have lots of stuff interact with them analyze the device launch applications and manage it very very easily i personally love it a lot and especially i love the mixed reality capture that makes the record video in a super easy way then you can also transfer the files via directly this device portal, but I advise you to do that only if your network is very fast, otherwise it's better to connect the device via USB-C and move it them in traditional way. The development for the HoloLens is made in Unity to the Mixed Reality Toolkit, or MRTK as it is usually referred to. It is an amazing tool set that provides you many functionalities for the HoloLens. You have seen when I showed you the application, it has lots of facilities for eye tracking, hand tracking, environment understanding, lots of shaders that you can use for curling of objects and to showcase things in a cool way. UI elements interactable with hands, fingers, with all possible feedback for the user. Really, there is a ton of stuff in this uh, SDK. And even more amazingly, it's all open source. And it is not only for all and theoretically, it's also for uh, VR headsets, if you want to use it. Even if, I have to say, most of people only use it for HoloLens, actually it's compatible with all headsets. So you can have all these facilities also in VR. So look, this is the... The features that you have for, just for UI, hand menu, tooltip for objects, manipulation, uh, possibility of scaling, uh, move and rotate objects with handles around them, environment understanding, blah, blah, blah. There is really, really a lot. All open source, all for everyone, constantly updated. It is a fantastic blog to start building Unity. Uh, I have to say that building Unity for HoloLens is different than building for the headset. So, when I usually review an SDK for uh, via headset, I say, okay, this is an SDK similar to all the other ones. In this case, the MRTK is different. Also because when you develop for HoloLens in Unity, you're not using Android or standalone build, like with all other VR programs that you made. You have to use Universal Windows Apps, UWP. And this is another way of developing. There is another tool set of libraries of C Sharp. Some of what you have on standalone in C Sharp doesn't work on UWP. So you have to understand what you can do. And also the development per se is different. You don't have controllers, you're just hand tracking. You are in a yard, you have lots of other things that you have to follow. So if you are, I don't know, an Oculus Quest developer, Learning how to develop for Steam VR is not that difficult. But learning how to develop for HoloLens using the Mixer Reality Toolkit and UWP, blah, 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 is a bit more complicated. So it's not impossible, of course, but you have to learn a bit more. So my experience is also that sometimes it's a bit problematic, something with the connection, sometimes you have to pass to uh, Visual Studio build but actually the mrtk makes everything easier because it has also lots of facilities for your build 
But it's something you have, you know, to spend some days to learn a bit. Talking about the battery, the duration of a session with the HoloLens 2 is around 2-3 hours. That is mostly okay for the usages that you may have with this device. Uh, this is what Microsoft claims and this is also what I verified during my tests. Microsoft also claims a very long duration of up to two weeks in standby mode. But actually, I don't know how this information is useful since you probably, if you have HoloLens, to use it and if you don't use it, you turn it off. So that's anyway a good battery time for this device. HoloLens 2 can be bought on Microsoft Store website or through dedicated resellers, like in Italy we have Evolus, for $3,500, both the business edition and the development edition. Um, there is also an industrial edition that includes some more certification, maybe some regular set or whatever, and the price is $5,000. So this is an enterprise-oriented headset, especially dedicated to big companies. So what are my final impressions on the Microsoft HoloLens 2? Nice device, but I expected a bit more. So especially the visuals are what ruined everything for me. So I'm not saying that they're really terrible. The colors are bright, the few of these are acceptable, but you know, the screen door effects, the glass, the chromatic aberration, uh, un-uniform resolution, also the few of these is acceptable, but breaks the magic when you go close to an object. You know, for 3500 I expect it to be much better. So if I pay 500 for a real glass, I can expect the visuals to be not great, but for 3500 mm, also because, you know, it's the sense that you use the most at the moment in MMR, the, the, the site, so it should have been made a bit better. Uh, I'm not saying it's really terrible, so you can live with it, but Mm, it's not perfect. <laughs> and for the rest, instead on the good side, the tracking is amazing. Yes, still not super perfect, blah, 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 but amazing. The best or in class for AR headsets. You can really have the impression that the objects are really in your room. And it tracks very well. The environment understanding is quite good. The fact that you can use voice tracking, eye tracking, hand striking, that works fairly well, is amazing and also is great for accessibility. And hand striking really surprised me because it's super stable, much better than one by Oculus, but we know that Microsoft works with computer vision and body tracking since the first Kinex so or many years. And the applications probably are a bit disappointing, are not that many but this is an enterprise device so it's not made that you buy it uh, you buy games on the store so it's made it to buy it play some demos and then maybe or you get a third party product or you develop product by yourself so it's okay for that all in all i have to say that it's a good headset also it's a set is very comfortable the battery life is enough so i can't say it's a bad headset um it's a good headset and probably I confirm that it is the top that we can have in AR and MR standalone at the moment. But I can't say I'm super excited just because really the visuals, we turn on the device you say, you see why these rainbows. So the best in class, but not completely approved by me for the price that it has. Anyway, if you need a very good enterprise AR headset, I think this is one of the best options that you have because also, apart from the device you have behind Microsoft, a very stable and reliable company and very good connection with Azure services. You know that now the cloud and IoT stuff is super important. So having all the Azure services easily connectable with this device is a plus for many companies. So again, probably the best in class for enterprise AR. It has also been chosen by the US Army for a reason. But don't expect too much when you, you wear it. It's still not perfect AR the consumer can use. The display must improve. There are also hand striking, UX, UI. There are lots of things that must 
be made better before this can arrive to the consumer in my opinion and that's it for today this super long review of the Hololens 2 has finished I hope you like this video I hope you survive till now without sleeping and if you like this video please like it and subscribe to my channel I love when you subscribe to my channel follow me on social media donate on my patreon send me a hug whatever you want so thanks for watching and wish you a great day in AR bye bye